I'm Romera. Uh, I am a vocal producer and a recording engineer um, with Platoon 7. Prior to my role here, I was an assistant engineer at Metropolis Studios in Chiswick. Um, obviously, I came up there as a runner as well. It's kind of where I cut my teeth. Um, but when I graduated from engineering school uh, from Abbey Road Institute, I got a residency for six to eight months at um, a Spotify studio which was located within Metropolis um, and that was for like producers and writers so that's sort of how I started um, getting into the engineering world um, and a lot the, the nature of a lot of those sessions were um, vocal recordings and that's again sort of how I got into vocal production and have just been doing that ever since. My experience with large format consoles did start at Abbey Road Institute when I was a student that was sort of my very first intro to a large format console, but um, after that, obviously doing more vocals um, in smaller studios, I was kind of away from that for a little while. It was actually the thing that um, inspired me to want to become an assistant engineer at Metropolis at that time was because I wanted to sort of extend my technical knowledge of everything and I wanted to get back working on consoles um, after six months of not having had access to them. Um, and obviously with being at Metropolis, they have a Neve VR. And so that was kind of my first, um, my, my first two experiences with, um, with consoles really. I didn't really have too much trouble going from working on the VR to working on the 88RS, if I'm honest. And I do a lot of vocal sessions, but with that and working very closely with artists and being vulnerable with them, they kind of trust me to then go on and record um, maybe the rest of the stuff that needs tracking um, or like the heavier track tracking sessions. So drums, guitars, everything. And I find with drums especially, I'm uh, I'm mainly using all the mic pre's on the desk because I love how those sound. Snare mics, um, I'm usually using the legacy equipment like any of the 10 series that we have. I like having all my drums on the console because I feel like it kind of glues everything together and I like the sound of these pre's. So um, I find that that helps just kind of helps everything meld into whatever the track is going to be. Um, and it's just so much easier. Again, I feel like it's such a luxury having the, this console here because the workflow is so easy um, and I can just have everything sort of laid out in front of me exactly how I want it um, and sending effects using the using the auxes. Um, it's a really easy way of working for me, so <laughs> that's usually how I like to have it. A lot of the time I'm actually tracking the vocals through a 1081 um, and then into a CL1B and then I'm using the desk either for cues or sometimes effects, it depends. Um, if I'm using it to mix and I am using the EQ on the console um, and kind of printing it back through tools, maybe through something else, maybe another outboard compressor, um, but usually that's how I, how I have it set up. I would say that when tracking vocals slash producing vocals, the preamp that I'm using is probably equally as important as the mic, the mic that I'm using. And I'm usually using uh, either a U47 or, or a 251 into the 1081 or a 1073 if I have either, either of those available, um, just kind of for that fat, warm sound, um, which is obviously very full, body, full bodied and excellent for a vocal. So it's kind of what we want. <laughs> I would say a feature of the Idiot RS that is crucial to my workflow currently, um, probably a number of auxes, to be honest. At the studio, we've got the Bracasti set on aux blank and blank, for example, and, and the Lexicon into some, another set of auxes. So they're always there and, and we kind of are mindful of that. Um, they're just kind of very easy to reach for and it's it allows for, um, I guess, a smoother workflow, uh, especially when we have a lot of clients um, that differ on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of genre, I mean. Um, and I think that allows us to be really flexible with sound. If I could take away a part of the console with me to my home studio, it would be the preamp. <laughs> um, maybe I'd take away the preamp and the EQ. Yeah, I'd take that away as like a little set. <laughs> uh, I would say that having a large format console um, again, it's a luxury uh, to have one, but I couldn't work on a, on a large session without one now. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> um, it, uh, again, especially with the bigger tracking sessions, kind of allows me to have everything in front of me exactly how I want to see it. Um, and uh, it kind of makes sense for a lot of the pop sessions that I do. 
I would say. Um, and again, that flexibility that it allows me to have makes it easier um, for me in the box as well. I'm kind of doing minimal stuff um, in the box anyway, but, um, but yeah, I honestly couldn't imagine being in a large studio without, without a console. The way I would describe the classic Neve sound, fat and warm, full bodied. I guess you you can hear that really clearly with sort of the legacy equipment um, in the 10 series, but I think it's also carried through on the 88 RS um, with those preamps and, um, and obviously you kind of have um, maybe a bit of a cleaner signal throughout the rest of the throughout the rest of the signal path, um, which allows you to be flexible with your sound. But um, yeah, the kind of warm, full-bodied sound. Thank you.